The true measure of a nation's or community's standing is how well it attends to its children, their health and safety, their material security, their education and socialization, and their sense of being loved, valued, and included into the families and societies into which they are born. When we look at infant mortality rate, that process, that, that event is tragic enough that you don't need to read anything else into it. But when the difference in the rate is substantial, it suggests to us that there is a very significant difference in the quality of life for the groups that are being assessed. Um, so that in general, where infant mortality, for example, is concerned, um, the infant mortality rate in the United States for blacks is about 2.4 times what it is for whites. Within the state of Michigan, it's a bit over three times what it is for whites. And within Kalamazoo County, it's between three to four times what it is for whites. Now, I present statistics that compare black to white in Kalamazoo County right here where we stay. But if you look at those same statistics and compare black Kalamazoo with other black folks in other counties and in Michigan, the data says that we do worse here than most counties in this state if you are black. In a community our size, where um, you know we're a relatively small place, the question is, what, what accounts for this difference? What's going on? Why can't we save black babies to the, same, to the same extent that we can save white babies in our community? As, and as we got involved in a project that looked to try to improve our community's infant mortality rate, <clears throat> one of the things that stood out for us was the following. That when we looked at all of the black births that occurred in Kalamazoo County over a long period of time, one of the things that we found was that of all black births that occur in Kalamazoo County, about 25 to 30 percent of those black births are to teenagers, to teens who are 15 to 19 years of age. I'm not quite sure why, you know, children are making the decision to be adults way before it's time. They don't understand. The, the, uh, the gravity of being a parent at such a young age. We have to be uh, more diligent about how we communicate to our children of that kind of um, uh, social responsibility. When we compare that, for example, to all white births that occur in Kalamazoo County, about 8% of all white births are to teenagers. Now, the percentages in each race don't help us compare apples to apples. What we need to know is what the birth rates are, excuse me, for the two different groups. And when we look at that, <clears throat> some other very interesting things jump out. Overall, our community has a lower teen birth rate than we do for the state of Michigan. And when we look Specifically, it, that data disaggregated by race. In fact, the white teen birth rate in Kalamazoo County is significantly better than the white teen birth rate for the state of Michigan, which is significantly better than the white teen birth rate for the United States for 15 to 19 year old teenagers. But when we look at that data for blacks, we find a totally different picture. In Kalamazoo County, the black teen birth rate one is five times higher than the white teen birth rate for 15 to 19 year olds. Two, the black teen birth rate for 15 to 19 year olds in Kalamazoo County is significantly higher than the black teen birth rate for the state of Michigan and is even higher yet than the black teen birth rate for the United States. We know nationally young African-American women um, who are active athletes don't get pregnant. If I have a job um, that links me to the next step in a position that I can see myself moving forward, 
I'm much more likely to make a different set of choices. We took it a step further and we, we looked to compare the disparity, the difference in teen birth rates for the different counties in the state of Michigan. So a five year period of time. There is no other county in the state of Michigan where the difference between the rate at which black teens give birth relative to white teens is higher than it is in Kalamazoo County. And that difference in Kalamazoo County for that five year period of time was 4.5, meaning that black teens had babies at 4.5 times the rate that white teens did in our community. And one of the things that we found <coughs> that, that, that really startled us was data regarding sexually transmitted infections. For 15 to 19 year old females for 2005, the incidence of chlamydia was seven and a half times higher, black compared to white. It was 16 times higher for gonorrhea, black compared to white. And when we looked at that data for males, 15 to 19 years of age, for chlamydia, black males experienced chlamydia 27 times the rate that white males do. And when we looked at gonorrhea for the years 2000, three, four, and five, the incidence of gonorrhea was 98 times higher for black males compared to white males 15 to 19 years of age in our community. Now all of that stuff <clears throat> raises a lot of questions. What is it that we are doing in Kalamazoo that allows us on the one hand to be so effective in protecting, helping our white children, but simultaneously not experiencing anywhere close to that same kind of success. This is a community children. issue, and these are community children. And if they're our children, we need to take care of them. When you track out that data over time, it not only says to us that there's a significant gap in how we do black compared to white, but that the gap has existed for a long period of time and that the gap is getting worse. It, it says that this community needs to step it up relative to African American children. It suggests we need to step it up in terms of Hispanic children. Similar data that would suggest we need to step it up in terms of children who are poor. But none of those things black, Hispanic, or poverty, excuses our community from um, not being supportive of children who statistically clearly document a need. I'm not surprised by the data, and I wish that there were things, and I know that there are recommendations about things that can make a difference in the lives of the children before they reach adolescence. That's really when we have to reach them. It's what it is, not good, not pretty. Uh, it's not just one aspect of the community that must work on it. It's a total community if we truly want the Kalamazoo that we talk about. All of that data can also be tied, of course, to a lot of other, what I refer to as comorbidities, a higher poverty rate, uh, a poor performance in school rate, um, a higher dropout rate, particularly for black males, a higher imprisonment rate. Pay attention to fam more attention to families who are in need and address those needs. At the same time, help help address a lot of deficits in our community. But 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 what is fundamental in that reality is the whole community is giving the same message. You know, the, I, I'm very happy about the Kalamazoo Promise. I think it's a wonderful initiative and I have a child that's in high school so it's a wonderful deal for me. But the kids that were at risk before the Promise yesterday are still the kids that are at risk today. Teen birth and families 
puts a strain on everybody. And it's not just a financial. I mean, everybody has to put their life like on hold and make sacrifices. Now is not the time I would advise any teenager. If you don't have any, do whatever you can to prevent it. One of my concerns as I've worked on this in this community is that I'm not convinced that Kalamazoo County wants to make a difference for those children. Each and every one of these little men and women deserve the best opportunity that we can give them. So let's roll up our sleeves and provide all of them with the best we have. Thank you. We speak life.